Namaste. You know, I haven't talked much about dreams on this channel. In fact, as far as I can recall, I haven't talked about them at all. <laughs> That's because, well, for one thing, ordinarily dreams are just mental indigestion, <laughs> you know? They're unfinished thoughts or incomplete desires or little bits of karma, as it's described in the scriptures, that don't require physical manifestation to finish. So most dreams are just nonsense, okay? <laughs> and you know how it is. Dreams can be so weird. You can be walking down the street one minute and the next minute you're in outer space. You know, it just it doesn't follow the same rules as physical reality. But there's something I've noticed over the years, a phenomenon that has come up for me anyway, again and again, but I've never seen it mentioned in the literature. You know, I've read all the standard Freud and Jung and all those guys about dreams. And there's a little bit in the scriptures about it, but apparently the scriptures don't consider it too important. The things that they do mention are that the dream that you have just before waking is the most significant, the most meaningful. And if there's going to be a message for you in your dreams, that's where it'll come up. And I've had a few dreams like that. And those I think I have talked about here. But there's only been a few, maybe two or three in my whole life. And another thing is erotic dreams. I just don't have them. I can only remember like one. So, you know, I'm not your typical dreamer, okay? <laughs> My dreams are about work most of the time. Working, traveling, going here and there, meeting with different people, having different you know, more or less trivial interactions with people. My dreams are lightweight. <laughs> They're not really heavy. They're kind of surrealistic because things can change in a moment, you know. But one thing that's been consistent about my dreams for a very long time, since my late 20s or early 30s, is the dream companion. Now, who is the dream companion? <laughs> Good question. In my early years, because I was a devotee of Krishna, I thought this companion was Krishna because mm, it, it was kind of an androgynous figure with long black hair, but always very silent, never took an active part in the dream was just kind of present and whatever I was doing or wherever I was going was just there and it wasn't much interaction. In fact, there wasn't any interaction at all that I can remember, just the presence. And then when I was studying the Buddha's teaching, I kept having these dreams with this same dream companion. And I wondered what was up. By the way, I never had a dream about Buddha. As far as I can tell, Buddha is just gone. Okay. Gone, gone, gone beyond. Gone beyond beyond. So, uh, if you have a dream about Buddha, it's probably just a dream. <laughs> anyway, the next phase, when I came back to India, immediately I got an association of people who were worshiping the goddess. The first people, family that I stayed with when I came back to India were devotees of Mahalakshmi. In fact, their family name was Lakshmi. And boy, they sure were into Lakshmi too. <laughs> 
and anyway, uh, they were very successful, very opulent people. And from them, I started getting a taste for the Sri Vidya. I went with them to the temple a number of times and so went to festivals and like that. And uh, I started getting into it. And then after I came to Tiruvannamalai, I was introduced to a Shakta sannyasi, a follower of the Shakti, the Devi, the goddess, uh, supreme goddess. And this was this turned out to be my sannyas guru, Jnana Shakti Swami. So when after I was introduced to him and he gave me some blessings, I started to have dreams about the mother. And at first, you know, she would just show up in the dream and, you know, there wouldn't be much interaction, but there was always some. That's the main difference I noticed. That, oh, for example, one time I dreamed that I was in some kind of shopping mall and pretty much there was nobody there. The stores were open. So this is weird, huh? Stores were open, but there was nobody in them. <laughs> anyway, there wasn't anything I wanted in the shopping mall. So I was on my way out. And as I was going out through the doors, you know how they have these double sets of doors to keep the AC in, I guess. Anyway, here's this very attractive uh, petite woman following me, right? And so, of course, I hold the door open for her. And then, uh, then I hold the second door open for her, too. And she just smiles, you know. And then she went one way, and then I went the other way out to my vehicle. Oh, yeah, I have lots of vehicles in dreams. <laughs> sometimes they're old cars or trucks that I've had, and sometimes they're just dreamed up. But the one thing that's consistent among all my dreams is that she is there. And I guess for the last three years now, four years maybe, she has been a consistent feature in my dreams. And there's always some interaction. One time I was having trouble with some neighbors. Not at the place where I stay now, but at another place. And... I had a dream about her, and in the dream, I was holding a sword, huh? and she didn't say anything. She just looked at me and smiled, but the message, message was very clear. Use your weapon. So I started chanting Lalita Sahasranam, and of course, the trouble resolved. I moved out of that place, and I got the place that I'm in now, which is really really rare and wonderful place. So she has been instrumental in my spiritual growth and the dreams have become more and more intimate, not sexually, because that would be inappropriate. She's married to Shiva, she's off limits. <laughs> but intimate in a personal way, like last night, we, we were in the place. I, I had left a fan on and fell asleep. Uh -huh. And I guess my body was cold. So I dreamed it was snowing. <laughs> and uh, we were going here and there and doing this and that and talking and even like lying down in the snow and playing and stuff like this. Just like a, a dear friend, just like a very close friend. And actually, this is my rasa. This is my uh, svad dharma. Uh, my taste in spiritual life is friendship. I have a relationship with Vishnu in his Nara Singha form as a very close friend, very, very close friend. <laughs> and now I also have a relationship with Ma. 
as a very close friend. It's not like she's my mother exactly, but she's like a close female friend. And there's, there's no sexuality involved, it's, but there is a lot of love. So now this has got me wondering, because it's been going on for years now, that was she actually always the dream companion, even in my earlier dreams, just in a different form, in a more Krishna-like form? You know, it's quite possible. Because she says in the Devi Mahatmya, in chapter 12, I believe, she says, I will incarnate in the Kali Yuga, in the house of Nanda, and I will kill the demons. So that's not Krishna's sister Subhadra. That's Krishna himself. Krishna does all the demon killing. <laughs> huh? Or Balaram. Balaram, Krishna's brother. So it means that either she becomes Krishna, uh, which is quite plausible because she also provides the forms of all the gods, even Shiva, uh, his form. He is naturally formless, and so is she. They're very, very subtle, and they don't like to appear in physical form. They only do it very rarely when there's real necessity for it. But they appear in subtle form. And those forms also are generated by her. Well, she is Mahamaya. Uh, she is the illusion. She is form in general and consciousness also. Because form means an object and consciousness means the subject that perceives that object. So she is all of that. She is the seer the seen, and the act of seeing. So that, that triple is the fundamental unit of a beingness or experience in this universe. So she is all of that. And Shiva, or Brahman, Nirguna Brahman, is just the witness. Uh, he witnesses even consciousness. To be conscious of consciousness or aware of awareness is one of the highest states. That's the fourth state, Turiya. And that's the root, actually, of all experience in this world. So anyway, to get back to the dreams, does anybody else have a similar experience? Does anybody else have a dream companion? someone that shows up in their dreams consistently and actually has a relationship with you. I mean, she advises me, she encourages me, she is just warm and affectionate friend to me. And she is really, uh, how can I say, the main person in my life at this point. Because I live alone, I only see people <laughs> when I go out to eat or go to the store or something. So I don't have really any close relationships externally, but internally I have my uh, dream companion and I have my dear friend Narasimha. Uh, so <laughs> I'm pretty self-sufficient emotionally. But I'm just wondering if anybody else has these experiences or if it's something unique and special. I don't know, you know. I just don't get to talk to that many people about things like this. So let me know in the comments. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung.